Happy Friday, Pat, and it is December 1st. I can't believe how fast that came rolling along. Oh, my God. I know. Remember, I think a couple months ago, we were, like, talking about how, um, before you know it, Christmas will be here. Well, we're pretty much here. <laughs> yep, I have started my shopping, so... But we are here and we're ready to go over some numbers today and talk about Arizona and talk about interest rates. And but mostly we're here for questions. If you have any questions, uh, we'll stay here all night. I mean, you know, Pat has no hobbies. Um, so I had to help my middle son move today. Some heavy stuff. He's moving from Tempe out to East Gilbert and uh, nice house. He's renting with some friends out there and they're all musicians. So oh, I boy. pity the neighbor. Um, but, uh, um, you know, that's what happens when you own a truck, right? So yeah. <laughs> you help people move. Yeah. Yeah. I just happened at Thanksgiving go, Oh, well, you know, I got a truck. Um, so, but, uh, anyway, our first comment before we came on live is from lovely to see you up in Sun City. Good numbers came out yesterday on inflation and, but we want to remind people that, uh, cause you may not remember it if you're a regular viewer of this show, uh, Pat and I took some rather aggressive action um, in about the end of October, wasn't it, Pat? Yep. And we, uh, and I think we were need to remind people that we penned this letter. Dear Mr. Powell, can you please stop raising rates? It's hurting the real estate business in Arizona. Thank you, Rick and Pat. Now we, we sent it regular mail. We didn't FedEx it or anything, but I mean, it's, pretty obvious to us right now why rates are coming down. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, that letter had more power than you and I ever thought. <laughs> yeah. There may, there, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say there might be other factors. We'll look at that. I don't um, know. I, I bet you Jerry's watching too. He just sees watching in the background. You yeah. Know? Well, we have millions and millions well, of viewers. No reason. Yeah. Not, not to, not, not to even consider that he's not watching our, our show. I mean, what else is he going Friday at three o'clock? So it's what it's five o'clock uh, back yeah. east. Yeah, he has he watches our show. He goes out and has a beer, and that's how he starts his weekend. So we're pretty excited about that. But <laughs> I saw some thumbnails coming out in uh, good old YouTube land, the land of negativity, talking about how new construction is plummeting and they're dropping prices like crazy. And here it is here. New home sales fare better in Phoenix Metro than the rest of the nation. Hmm. So right now, new home sales fell 5.6% nationwide in October. They increased in the Valley, according to the R.L. Brown housing report. Metro had 1,854 new home closings in October, up 4% from October of 2022. So whatever numbers that they're seeing that show that we're crashing, it ain't here. Uh, keep searching, folks. Keep searching. Yep. Our CMI, um, as we get into November, and, you know, well, I'll start with the seven-day moving average here. It it always does this. You get into November. Look at how it fell to the floor and it's coming back up. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, um, we'll see what happens. I expect new listings to just kind of stay flat for a while and uh, not, you know, shoot up. But according to the Cromford Market Index, I'm saying here that um, Goodyear went up a little bit, but there was an average decline of 13.1 in the CMI for the 17 cities. That's an improvement of the 15.2% decline. So uh, we went down by 13, but it used to be going down 15. So I guess that's better. Um, but it said we're seeing gradual improvement in the demand trend and supply has finally stopped increasing in most areas, which is what we can expect to see once Thanksgiving is over. And this is what they're showing here. I'm, I've been expecting, and it's you don't have to be a rocket scientist to say supply is going to dip because mm -hmm. it does every holiday season. So if we get up to... 2,200 contracts again on every seven days. It's just going to be more of the same as we get through. And then here's my favorite chart. Now, this one's kind of a watch out chart, Pat, because uh, the lines are getting ever so close here between the index, between supply and demand with the uh, listings starting to come up, supply and demand starting to come down. Um, if they touch, you get pricing pressure on the downside like we did 
back here last year. Mm -hmm. And this is the opposite. This is when demand was way up, inventory was down, and this is when the wheels fell off the wagon. So I want to watch that closely, kind of like watching your cholesterol, right? So Yep. <laughs> I agree. Now, the uh, Who came out and said this? Fannie Mae. Economic growth remains likely to accelerate and ultimately result in a mild recession in 2024, followed by a return to growth in 2025. This is prediction season. So this is from yep. Fannie Mae. So they're saying we're going to have a mild recession and uh, mortgage rates will start to decline in the first half or the second half of 2024 and settle in the sixes. So right now we're not seeing too many price changes or reductions because again, it's Thanksgiving week, but, but uh wild week in rates kind of unexpected for me. I wasn't expected. I guess the inflation numbers came in good, huh? Yeah, they did. I mean, pretty much not the more people with numbers, but yeah, that they're the feds favorite number PCE came in flat year over year. It was down from 3.4 down to three. I mean, um, Barry was saying that um, if you were to, catch up shelter within the, the core PCE and actually account for the legs in the shelter that the real time core inflation would be around 2.6%. And, um, you know, Barry was going on to say that, uh, you know, the feds could maintain a restrictive stance, you know, for some time, you know, they feel like, I mean, it sounds like the way they're talking jaw boning, you know, cause they could do a lot with jaw boning, basically just talking, you know, what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fact that uh, I, my, you know, like I said, my two cents worth is they're going to keep rates here. They're not going to open up the door right away as, as soon as inflation looks like it's coming down. They're going to, I think they're going to squeeze every orange juice, bit of juice out of the orange that they possibly can get. So um, I don't see, I think the market is going to be the best predictor watching rates where they're at. Because once again, they always go three to four months ahead of time. Yeah, the central bank didn't change anything. Rates aren't going down because they did anything. No, no. Uh, the no, the they, market's market's pulling them down. Market's pulling them down. I mean, we hit we hit a high of uh, basically look at here right here at this tip. We hit about, you know, uh, you know, 507, 508 on the 10 year. And we've already we're we're sitting at 419 right now. So we've lost 80 basis points in the last well that was literally just a little over, you know, Let's say call it a month ago for for sake of you know time. And you see this stretch. I mean, rates have come down. I mean, right now, going back, you look at rates. I'm pulling up this one, uh, just to pull this chart up. Purchase price of 475, 5% down, looking at this one lender. And you know, this is the loan list that I have that I can go through all my lenders. Um, you know, back end of October, we were looking at obviously there are some lenders out there that are probably quoting eight, eight and eighth. Um, you know, we were looking, I was looking at about seven, seven, eight, seven, three quarters right in there. Right now, seven, seven, eight gives you a credit of $4,900. And before a month ago, that was a cost of what, uh, 12, $1,300, $1,500. So we've, we've ran back the cost about, oh, 6,500 bucks, let's say in just the last month. So now you're looking at rates. You know, a five percent down at seven. You could actually get in the sixes with a, a buy down six nine nine. So, if we see another, I mean, we've already rallied, you know, just about seven eighths of a point in the last month. So, it's, I mean, it's looking positive. I really, my my prediction is that we've hit a peak on rates the end of October, and with the talk of the Fed's kind of, um, you know, everybody's got their opinions. This is just my opinion and just watching the markets that we saw a peak in the end of October. And with the feds kind of saying, hey, we're, I think we've done our job. We're just going to let it sit here at 60 miles an hour right now. Um, you know, it bodes well for rates. I mean, if we see any type of rally like we've have in the last month, heck, we could see rates uh, in the high sixes, you know, mid sixes, you know, very quickly. Well, well, I was, I was questioning a couple of months ago, Pat, when we were up at the, you know, before we wrote the letter, obviously, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> the, and, letter uh, was good. the letter, you know, it really did good. He, um, I think we should, you know what, I just real quickly, I think if they do come down in the low sixes, high fives, I think we should send them a thank you note as well. 
a, a, a Starbucks gift card. Starbucks sure. card, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Well, because okay. I was questioning a couple months ago, and as rates were going up, and you, you know, whenever they go up, you get the chatter that we're going to get up to nine percent, and it's highly possible. And yep. you know, and then when they start to go down a quarter, oh, we're going to be below seven. So it just goes back and forth like this. But what I was questioning was, okay, look, the builders are offering these huge incentives to buy down rates, and to get rates attractive enough to get buyers to come in to buy their their new homes, they're spending more and more money. How much longer are they going to have that money to buy down the rate? Well, they just caught a big break this week, didn't they? Yeah, I think they, you know, they certainly probably don't have to. I'm sure that that money is cutting into their profit margins. So it that money has got to come from somewhere. It, it's coming from somewhere. So, you know, I, you know, it's always, I've been out of the builder market, a lot of brokers, you really can't compete with the rates that they're offering because they can play with that. You know, that's what that's one market that it's just like you said, I think the new builds de definitely different than the resale because you've got that unknown of what the builders can do, what they got built in for profit margins and all, you know, all that's going behind the, you know, the black curtain. So um, I think if rates start coming down, you know, building is obviously based on that article that you said that they're slowing. They're not going to give the incentives. Well, I called the Taylor Morrison community this morning and I said, what kind of incentives are you offering? And she says, oh, we're offering a rate buy down. And uh, and if you're going with the, uh, those are for spec homes, you know, ones that are move in ready. And then if you want one built, um, we're giving a free washer and dryer. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, sign me up. Um, are you that, serious? That, that's so much better than getting $20,000 in uh Seller oh, yeah. concessions from oh, like a free washer and dryer. I, I, so I, I said LG, um, but uh, so wow. you know. <laughs> well, that's so that's changed from a couple months ago. It has, it has, and I, and you know, because the traffic is still good, and we just saw that, right? You know, yep. new new home sales are up despite I don't know what it's like in other parts of the country. I don't care. I'm just yep. looking at Arizona, and I see these headlines, these boots on the ground, people talking about how gloomy it is out there i'm just not seeing it here yet and here's our average price list price per square foot pat it's not it hasn't moved 366 to 364 and what i haven't checked in a while um meaning like a week um is seller paid closing costs let's see what the average is here now because that's where the money's going so it's still staying at 44 percent and uh we're at 9,655 median concession. So, and Lisa says, where are you that it's nighttime? Um, Lisa, people that know me know that I do this show in a very dark basement. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, and they don't let me out during the day. So that's <laughs> actually it's a bar. Um, so Pat, if you'll take over the show, I'm going to step back here and pour a drink. So, <laughs> but we all know how good you are at taking over the show. So yeah, I, I get all I get all misfitted when I, I feel like I've lost my dog. Yeah, <laughs> our contract ratio um, is still fairly decent, and I'm trying to pull that up here now if it'll cooperate with me. And uh, even though I've got probably the best internet speed in the planet, there we go. Here it is. It's down, um, down to 39.5 as a ratio. Our peak was 307. I mean, talk about a wild difference, huh? This is yeah. when you could stand on your front porch and go, house for sale. And yeah. now you have to put a little teeth in it. So we're not at this line here, which is a cold market right here. We are in the balanced zone, which is between these two right here. So it just makes, look, if you're going to list your home, um, you got to make sure you price it right. Cause this is not the time where you want to want to test it. Now rates have come down. I think you said it's a difference of about on that example, you got about two seventy nine dollars a month. Yeah. About, yeah. About $275 a month. So, uh, I mean, for the average buyer, the new buyer, they're certainly hoping for more relief than that. Um, I'm still cautious about spring uh, because of the um, number, the high number of spending that I saw in Q3 by uh, the administration and the debt as uh, 
even Barry pointed out last week, we've amassed $2 trillion in debt in six months, which normally Latin history has shown that took 100 years. Mm -hmm. So it's out of control. And so the interest on the debt is out of control. So I'm, it's highly possible at the end of the next year that, you know, the, the central bank's probably going to have to say, well, let's, we're just going to have to let go and let housing inflate because we've, we're going to kill these banks if we keep these rates as high as they are. Yeah. I, I, I really think, I mean, I'm hearing more chatter. Welcome um, back, Stephanie. Stephanie, welcome back. Yeah. Um, you know, you hear the we're chatter on these financial news networks and, um, you know, you hear about the chatter about the debt. And the bottom line is it's getting to the point of we're not too far from going to point of no return if they don't get this stuff under under control. That's why. Yeah, I think, write your congressman. I mean, seriously. Write the letter that we wrote. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't give me doesn't have to be fancy. No, it doesn't have to be fancy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've we certainly proved that. Um, in fact, I would imagine. Have you got your thank you letter from the National Association of Realtors yet for that or? No, not yet. Um, I haven't not even yet. had any agents call me and say, um, <laughs> so. No, but I just think I, that uh, with the chatter and the, the Fed, you know, I think. I got to believe there's some talk behind the scenes of how big this debt is really getting. And they're just going to have there's got to be some. Remedy, they just got to stop spending and they've got to get the fiscal policy in line with the monetary policy. And that's what has been blowing this whole circus apart the last year and a half is it hasn't been any type of uh, fluidity with between, you know, working them, working them together. Well, I'm going to share a scary chart here, Pat, for banking. And they have what's called unrealized gains and losses. In other words, it's, it's paper. So it's like your home has $50,000 in equity. That's called unrealized gains because you haven't sold it yet. Yep. So you don't have the equity. It's upside down by a hundred thousand dollars. That's unrealized losses. If you sold it, you'd lose it, but you haven't sold it. Well, banks, you know, they do their books the same way. And when the interest rate flew up and the banks were left holding these bonds, they have a high number of unrealized losses that will only go away if rates come back down substantially. Ready for the chart? Mm hmm. I want to see it. Sitting down. Look at that. This is unrealized losses. Compare that historically. What's how, what? What's the number? What what is the number on the left hand chart? What the billions? It says almost seven hundred and twenty five billion. Because the Federal Reserve back in March when this stuff hit, remember I I brought this up a couple of weeks ago. Eighty four. The, the the Federal Reserve. They set the aside, I think it was a $25 billion. Uh, it was kind of like a tarp behind the scenes reserve for banks. That uh -huh. they, can, they can actually, I remember we talked about that a couple of weeks ago that they've got this fund. I think it was 25 billion, which obviously is not enough, no. you know, to help, to help banks, you know, if they need to sell it, they can kind of put it. I don't know how it kind of works, to be honest with you, but it, it was this article and I, I looked it up on the federal reserve that they, did make this fund available back in March. They're probably gonna have to increase it. Yeah, there's probably a way to look it up on Fred, the Federal St. Louis Fred, uh, Federal Reserve. So, you know, Stephanie here makes a good comment too. She goes, it's potentially foreseeable that rates could quickly rise again late January, February, if Congress does not solve the debt limit issue. They're gonna have to do something about that. It's election year. They're not gonna be able to kick this down the road anymore. I don't think we have too much room for the can to go down the road. It just, it, it, uh, when they got rid of the debt ceiling and said, we'll address it in 2025, um, that you could smell the disaster coming. I just thought, mm -hmm. who are these people? Yeah. And both parties are at fault. Yep. You know? Yeah. Oh, well, well let, let's just not worry about it. And, and the man, whoosh, here came the spending, spend, spend, spend everything. A lot of it's getting wasted like crazy. And, you know, we're on two war fronts right now. That that's spending as well. That doesn't work its way back into the economy to cause inflation. Um, a little bit maybe, but uh, yeah. YouTube. Good evening, all. My favorite YouTube name of all out there. So, uh, but you know, it, it's all eyes are on January right now. What is going to happen with our inventory? 
Um, do you expect more people to list in January, Pat? Because they do seasonally. Do you expect much of that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would a little bit more, but I just don't see there's nothing really breaking until rates, you know, do start to come down noticeably where people can say, hey, I can sell this house and buy this house. I think if you get into the low mid sixes, I think it's a hell of a lot better than seven and a half or eight percent. I mean, I they're just so the inventory, everything has been slow. I mean, the, on the mortgage side, um, it just it, it's just a standstill. Well, we were adding 400 homes on a weekly basis. And at that trend, that would have put us at 20,000 units in uh, February. Um, and it slowed as we're getting now from 14.1 to 14.4. So we slowed down to like 200 homes a week. And now it's taken a dip. So it's going to have to dig itself out of the hole again if I expect to see um, 20,000 again in uh, in February. But I think 17, 17 to 18,000 is a fairly good guess. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know where our friend, uh, um, who is it, said we were going to have 9% interest rates by the end of the year? Um, Terry. 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 Terry Tomroot. Where's, where's Terry been lately? Terry, are you on here? Because <laughs> I'm going Christmas shopping and I need your dollar because you bet me a dollar. So, so I'm. <laughs> I'm, no, I just, I'm looking at the charts, like you said, you could, we can look at all the numbers, but the market will tell you what, what is going on. Um, it just seemed like that. There was like that last push the end of October with rates and it, you know, I might be wrong, but it just feels like the feds talking that they're kind of like, okay, we're past the, this pandemonium and they're just going to let it sit. Now people are used to it. And I just think that we're going to see a little bit more relief in rates here the next couple months. That's just my two cents worth. And if we get, we're not, like you said, we've already rallied. It doesn't take much for rates. I mean, rates quietly have gone down about three quarters of seven eighths of a point from, from a month ago. And it was just one CPI, uh, one, uh, not CPI, but C, um, PC. PCE. It just only took that one number to come out that gave us a little bit of, of relief. It's still high in comparison yeah. to where we were. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's still, it's still a daunting for people to get into a home. It's tough. And uh, I would like to see us, to be honest, stay right here. Stay mm -hmm. here. Um, give wages a chance to catch up the next couple of years. Um, you know, let prices stabilize and maybe gradually come down, not fall like a rock and Let's get some kind of a soft landing. It's not good for any of us if we, right now, I don't think, if we see rates in the fives. Yeah. I, I hope I, it. That's I, not I healthy. It, 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 no. It's going to give everybody this optimism. Ah, here we go. And then it's just yep. going to start all over again. Yeah. I mean, anything, you can have a push upward like we have had the last 12 to 15, 16 months on rates. doesn't do any good. And to have them come crashing back down again, it's just going to create that. Once again, you're going to create that volatility that um, I, it just is not good for the market overall for buyers or sellers. You know, it's, it's not good. I haven't seen any uh, crazy new loan products come out. So that's good news. No, no, nothing pretty much on loan programs. I mean, they, um, if, you know, the, Things have been pretty quiet on the on the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. There's nothing new to really report there. Um, but, you know, I think just people have got to, if they're looking at buying, once again, put yourself in a position where, you know, you're, you know, if you're looking the next three to six months, just keep working at putting yourself in a better position. Because I think, uh, you know, I, I, that's just my prediction. I'm just, I, I got to be, somebody's got to predict something somewhere. And I'm just going to say this is prediction season. I think we are seeing, we saw the top in October. I um, mean, there's going to be talk about the debt and I think they will eventually resolve something, but you know, I, it definitely, I can see rates in the low sixes, low to mid sixes. And uh, well, that would if, be. Yeah. And if the, the, Pat, if the federal government doesn't lower debt, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So Stephanie here says, remember when the magic interest rate number we would chat about was 5.5? Well, we saw it clearly in the charts. Remember that, Stephanie? It would just, when when rates went up and then all of a sudden it went down to 5.5 and the contracts 
jump back up again. So we know that's that's an aggressive rate right now. Yeah. Uh, people yeah. Would jump in. Imagine a 5.5 prevailing rate and new home builders buying it down to 4.5. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, that's once again a one. You can do a one-year buy down. You can do a two-year one-year buy down. Is not doesn't cost you that that much at all. Maybe a couple, you know, three thousand um, dollars. You know, two one buy down. You know, you're looking at you know. Well, actually, it was like three or four thousand. But two one buy down might be about eight to nine thousand, depending on the on your house. You know, the how the size of your loan. So I mean, yeah, I mean, if you get rates in the uh, you know high sixes, six and three quarters, you can do a two one buy down get down to four and three quarters for a year. I mean, that's pretty attractive. Yeah. And you can get, because of the seller concessions, you can get sellers to purchase that buy down for you. Yeah. I just, once again, people have to realize that, you know, this is just a general topic. Uh, you know, people are waiting for homes to crash. I mean, you know, we're trying to provide our information for people that maybe are looking to buy here in the next three to six months. Um, you know, there's always going to be that crash group, but I mean, we've, if you look back the last 12 to 18 months, we've we've actually weathered quite a bit of stuff and in interest rates. And you see houses still, house value still being obviously sustained. And um, once again, it just, it comes down to pure supply and demand. And we just don't have the supply out there. And the, once the demand will be created by interest rates, and if rates do obviously get attractive, we saw that we're, you're going to see a lot of people being pulled back into the market and I just think that right now it's kind of a buy low, sell high strategy. Cause if you do buy something in the sevens, you're going to have a chance to refinance. Um, I'd rather take that chance. Just me personally speaking, then waiting for rates to get to five and a half, five and three quarters. Cause you're going to have bidding wars of 10, 15, 20,000, 25,000 over the bid price. That's my, that's my stance on everything. Well, I've been talking that if you're thinking of selling and listing in January, you may want to push that up uh, because even though we only have record lows, you know, those are the headlines, record pending sales, low, never been this low. Well, you know, listings are still fairly low too. So you stand a pretty good chance of moving your home and look, you can list it in December and you can always say no showings Christmas week. You can put that in the MLS, nobody bother you, but list it in December. And cause there's serious buyers out there that have to move they're planning on being in a house at the first of the year, either a corporate relocation or, or they already sold their house before Thanksgiving. And so you list it in December, you can close in January. If you list in January, that's normally when we start seeing more homes come on the market, you've got more competition rates, maybe a little bit lower. We don't know for sure, but you know, it is what it is right now. And I would say, if you're thinking of listing in January, I'd pull the trigger Pull the trigger now. Thank you, Stephanie. We're glad you're tuning in. Thank you, um, Stephanie. So I, yeah, I really think that's, um, you know, and I, I speak that personally because I listed a house uh, in Fountain Hills once on uh, Christmas Eve and had a contract New Year's Eve. Yeah. And nobody came ringing my dull door Christmas Day to look at it. And it's, it houses look really nice when you go in, you know, during the holiday season, except the day after if you haven't picked up all the wrapping paper. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, so, well, Pat, this has uh, been fun. I want you to have an excellent Friday and take on the weekend. And uh, we'll see how sore I am after helping my son. You know, I was helping him load the truck up at his other place over in Tempe. It's a single story. And I said, um, yeah, so your bedroom you're moving into is on the second floor, isn't it? And he goes, yeah, sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> they don't put handles on mattresses anymore. You notice that? Oh, I know it's a it's a bear to move. I hate you know, even though they're not that heavy, they're like just you know, like, moving around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so all right, that's the next letter we're going to write. Yeah. Dear sir, put, hand, put handles put on mattresses. Hand handles back on the mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat, have a fabulous right. weekend, huh? All right, brother. Take care. Take care, everybody. Good talking to you. Bye bye.